am making some cookies and I thought I would bring you along with me today. Welcome back. Thank you so much for joining me today. I am making some cookies. If you're new here, I'm Catherine, the Arrow Garden Homesteader, and the holiday season is coming up. I like the cookie part of it, although I don't like the overindulgence that happens, and then the expanding waistline part, but I love the cookies that my mother used to make when I was growing up. Probably a little too much. I am making some of those today and I am going to be sharing some with the neighbors. So this is my way of getting some of the cookies that I want to eat without having to eat the entire batch because apparently my kids don't like some of these cookies. Or they haven't figured out they like them yet, I guess would be the other way of looking at it. I will be making two different kinds of cookies. I've already made a batch of cookies. Um, those ones were just peanut butter, um, peanut butter chocolate chip cookies that I threw in the freezer. Those are for my kids. I think I've already shown how to make chocolate chip cookies, or the way I like my chocolate chip cookies. So I just substitute half of the shortening for peanut butter, and that is how I do it. So hopefully the kids like those. Sometimes they like things, sometimes they don't. Okay. I am going to be making two different kinds of cookies. One is a, you know, I don't know if I want to say it's a true shortbread, but in my book, it is called a shortbread cookie, and that is the one I grew up with, so I am making a shortbread. This one is going to be a buttery sugar cookie. This is the nicest recipe I have found for cutout sugar cookies that also have that nice, almost a shortbread-like cookie feel to it, but not. So it's it's super close to a shortbread, but it is still a sugar cookie. So I'm going to be showing you how to how I make those. I got this recipe from someone's website. I will be sure to link that below. Can't remember the name of it right now, but I'll be sure to link that below. So I feel like every time I make this in the stand mixer, I think I beat the butter too much and then it makes the cookie spread. So even though it calls for chilling the dough, I have still had spreading in the past. So hopefully this will turn out this time. I'm just not going to overmix. So I don't know, I don't know what was going on. I'm just going to sort of get the butter going a little bit. So that was a cup and a half of butter. So I'm going to end up with one stick left over when I'm, when I'm done with this. And it is, I'm using unsalted, so I will have to add some salt to it this time. Butter has been sitting out at room temperature for probably a little too long, honestly. Okay, I am going to put in a cup and a half of sugar. Now, I do think I might have made a change to this recipe, so if I did make a change, I will make sure to make a little note on the screen, just in case you go and download the recipe and you notice it looks a little different. So I'm going to bring these two together, and again, I'm just going to try to not overmix it, because I think that's what was making it flat last time. Okay, it calls for two eggs. I have two fresh washed eggs. These have also been sitting at room temperature, so hopefully nothing curdles the mixture. Okay, it calls for one and a half teaspoons of vanilla. Now, if you prefer an almond extract in your cookie, you can certainly substitute that out. I do not know if it's a one-to-one, -one, uh, so you might you might want to make sure that if you're adding almond extract, because that is a stronger flavor, that you're not adding too much. Okay, I'm going to put in some salt at this point. Probably about half a teaspoon. Okay, I'm adding cornstarch. Now, this is the ingredient that I think I might have um, made a change to the recipe on. So I'm adding half a cup of cornstarch. And apparently, I have to get my other thing of cornstarch. Half a cup of that. One teaspoon of baking powder. I'm going to give that a quick mix. Then, I'm going to get the flour in. It calls for three and a half cups of flour. Now, it does say that if you find that the cookies are a little on the soft side, when you're rolling it out, that you can generously flour the work surface to help with that. So your mileage may vary on how many cups of flour you may actually need. But I am definitely going to start with the three and a half, so that's three. And then this is my half. Now if you have one of these, or you're thinking about getting one of these, there is like a lip around the edge. You do want to make sure you get all of your ingredients out of that little lip to make sure everything is properly incorporated. And I do sometimes get some up on the top here, but it's not... Sometimes it's really bad if you dump things straight in, but if you're just mixing like this, it's not too bad. Okay. So I am going to get this. I'm probably going to divide it up into two, 
and um, put it into two separate flat discs wrapped in um, saran wrap. And then I'm going to throw this in the fridge. It's just going to sit in the fridge. It's best to go overnight. Uh, I don't think I'm going to get to this any time today, so I will just uh, just plan on it being overnight. And I will see you in the morning for this part. Okay, and I am moving on to the shortbread cookies. I've cleaned everything up. The dough is now in the fridge. And onward. This is a pretty simple recipe. You either have a shortbread recipe that you love and you're just watching this to see how I make mine, or you've never made shortbread cookies before, and give it a try. I, I really love this recipe. I've, I've tried other shortbread cookie recipes, and I think there's something about the recipe that you grew up with that's always going to, you know, it's always going to hit home. So my mom used to make these every year. My grandmother used to make these. It's, it's just a family recipe that, you know, it's been in the family. I like mine kind of undercooked, so they, they kind of powder up in your mouth a little bit. It's hard to describe the texture. It's not sandy, but it does sort of powder up a little bit. It's really it's a really interesting te texture, but that's just the way I like it. That's what I grew up with. I also like them straight from the freezer. <laughs> so that, that kind of works out because so far there's, I think I'm the only one who really loves these cookies. My husband will eat them, but my kids have sort of turned their nose up at them, unfortunately. Okay, this is my first time making this in a stand mixer. I normally do this by hand, and it's really... It's a slightly painful slog. Um, it's possible to do it by hand. You'll hit a point where you're just going to have to, you know, put the stick, you know, the, the wooden stick down and just get in there with your hands to get it all to come together. This year, I'm trying something different. I'm going to do the same thing I did with the sugar cookies. I'm going to just sort of mix things until it comes together, but not quite. If I have to finish it off by hand, I will at that point, but... We're going to see how it happen, how it goes with this. Okay, I need one cup of cornstarch. Okay, I don't normally use fine table salt, but for this I am because the there's really no other wet ingredients in this, and I'm going to put it in now just to make sure it's got salt in it. Um, I used unsalted butter again. Normally I would have used salted butter, especially for this one, but we had a lot more unsalted, and I wanted to make sure it wasn't just sitting there going bad, so I am going to make sure it gets used. Use what you have. That's that's what I'm going to say. I had unsalted, I'm going to use it. But make sure you add salt, otherwise it will taste really bland. Okay, so hopefully the salt has been mixed throughout. It'll have plenty of time to get mixed throughout, so... Okay, I need one cup of icing sugar. I just get mine from the bulk bin. I'm hoping that there is enough in this bag to fill a cup, but I don't think that's enough for a cup. But I'm gonna use the bag first. Okay, it's best to use icing sugar for this because you don't have to worry about trying to dissolve sugar into the butter and then overworking the dough. Icing sugar is also called confectioner sugar or powdered sugar. You could probably use caster sugar, but I've never really tried, so I wouldn't know. But if you've got like a really ultra-fine sugar, it might also, oops, might also work. Okay, I'm going to get that mixed in. Okay, calls for four cups of flour. I'm probably going to do this one cup at a time and hope I don't lose my place. I will go through the uh, trouble of fluffing my powder, but I still do the uh, scoop and shovel method, whatever it's called. Okay, this is the last cup of flour to put in. And that is literally it. So like I said, I might have to work this one in by hand, but we will see. I'm going to give it a scrape. There's probably some on the bottom that hasn't worked in properly. I think that is as good as it's going to get. I am going to clean up because I am going to need the same area to roll it out as I am working. So I'll be back in a minute. Okay, well I got almost everything ready. I have some trays with some sill pads on them. I don't think I've used Silpats when I've made my shortbread cookies before, so we'll see how that goes. Um, if you do use Silpats, make sure you keep your cooking Silpats separate from your baking Silpats. Don't ask me how I know, but it was gross. I got a selection of cookie cutters. I have some flour for rolling. I need to go get a rolling pin because apparently I forgot to think about that. But let me get the dough turned out so I can get rid of this from the counter. Now, if it's super powdery and you're working on it, by hand. You're going to have to kind of bring it together like this and then just work the the powdery stuff together into the main mass. So kind of down here at the bottom there is a little bit of powdery stuff so I will need to work that a little bit more but should be fine. I just want to sort of gather up all the little bits, rub it down, 
Probably hard to see this, but okay, there we go. Let me give this a couple of needs just to help make sure everything is kind of together. That's the oven. It's at 350. I am going to go get my rolling pin. Making shortbreads comes with a lot of slapping. Slap that dough. Let it know who's boss. Okay. Okay, so like I said, you either have a family recipe and you know exactly what you like, or you're here trying to figure it out. I like my cookies on the thick side. Probably should have worked that a little bit more. I've never seen it crack like that. But if you like a thinner cookie, you know, something that's got a lot more crunch to it, you do you. It's your kitchen. You figure it out. don't normally flip this over as much as I have been, but I do want to make sure it doesn't stick. I don't remember ever chilling this dough. Now I'm kind of wondering if I was supposed to chill the dough. Funny, the older I get, the less I remember. Okay, I guess we'll find out. I am going to do a bunch of little ones. That way they all cook up at the round, around the same amount of time. I hope you can see how thick that is. That's about how thick I like mine. And when it comes out of the oven, it's going to look about the same as it went in. It's going to be very, I don't want to say anemic, but it's going to be very pale. And don't be afraid to flour your cookie cutters. I get about two cuts and then it starts sticking, so I flour. Now, I do not remember these spreading, but again, I have not done these in a stand mixer before, so for all I know, this is going to be a big mess. If it uh, turns out like it normally does, there should be no spreading. You can get them relatively close. I mean, I wouldn't put them on top of each other, but you can get them pretty close. Edges are obviously a little thinner than the center. This is like a puzzle. How is your spatial reasoning? How many cookies can you cut from one piece of work to dough? Now, like I said, I will be giving some of these away to the neighbor. A bunch of these will end up in the freezer for me to snack on throughout the year or the month, depending. They freeze beautifully. You can frost these after they're done. You can put, uh, we used to decorate it with chocolate chips and colored sprinkles before it went into the oven. So there are lots of ways to jazz this up. If you have the, um, I don't know what they're called, but like those colored cherries, dried cherries that people put on cookies. We occasionally would put those on, but not very often. But obviously, it's it, whatever you would want to put on your cookies, you can. You can put a piece of slivered almond if you want, just for a little, you know, texture there. I'm starting to run out of room on my cookie sheet. Hopefully the two will align. Okay, it's a wee bit thick down here, so I will probably avoid rolling or cutting into that part. But I think that might be, that might be all she wrote. Now, let me get these other ones out. Then I will ball this up and roll out some more. I am also going to need something to get these off the counter. If you have an offset spatula, you can use one of those to get these off. Otherwise, a bench scraper will do the job as well. A tray of snowflakes. So, every oven is different. You should probably do a test bake, but um, we're not going to do that today. I will be putting these in, it says 10 minutes, but they may only need 8 minutes. I will keep an eye on the first batch. I will keep an eye on the second batch as well because it's going to be bigger cookies and I want to make sure they all get cooked to the same degree of whiteness, I guess. You want them to be just barely set and with no color. That's what you're looking for if you want to make them the same way I make mine. Otherwise, uh, make them however you want. I will show you in the end how these ones turn out and I will bring you along for the sugar cookies to do the same process. It is the next day. I have my chilled dough out. It's actually been out for probably about 15 to 20 minutes. I wanted to make sure it wasn't hard as a rock. It needs to be somewhat workable. Get that out of the wrap. I do have some cookie cutters ready to go. I thought I had lost my cookie cutters. I could not find them yesterday for the life of me. It took me forever. They're obviously in the last place I put them, but not where I expected them. Okay. My workflow is going to be to keep this pretty much as cool as I can. So I want to work with it relatively fast. I am going to put it on, I'm going to do a test bake on the cookies first, just to make sure they're not spreading too much. But my flow is going to be, I'm going to roll this out. 
cut it out, get it on the cookie sheets, and put the cookie sheet in the freezer. I want to chill these before I bake them. So it gives it a chance to firm up the butter a little bit because working it will, it will melt the butter a little bit, or at least soften it. And so I want to make sure that I give the cookie a chance to firm up again. That will also help with spreading. If you do get a lot of spreading, uh, it might be worth might be worth adding more flour just to see if that'll help. I don't know. I don't know what to tell you. Do it by hand, maybe. <laughs> Seems like the last time I did it in the stand mixer, it spread more than when I just did it by hand. It was very odd, and I don't know. I don't know if I'm just overworking the butter or what. Anyways, this is going to be a little bit of a fight. Um, I'll speed through just so you can kind of see the whole first, you know, flow of work. I am turning this, this is kind of, I'm kind of working it like pastry right now where I'm just sort of turning it and encouraging it to flatten out and I'm just rolling the middle. But do whatever you're comfortable doing. A little bit of cracking will occur, but you know, it's just because you're working with something that's got a lot of butter in it. They smell good already. Now, I have also heard, and I don't know how true this is because, you know, it's the internet. People have their own little old wives' tales or whatever, but I have heard that if you don't want your cookies to spread too much, like lose shape, to not put baking powder or baking soda, you know, leavening in it. And then I've heard other people who say that they haven't noticed, uh, you know, one way or the other, that affecting the shape of their cookies. So, your mileage may vary. Do what you want. Depends on what kind of a product you're looking for. You know, if you want something super pro super professional with super crisp corners, you know, maybe you don't want to add leavening. But, you know, hey, what? I'm giving these to the neighbors. I don't think they care. Um, Okay, it does say to roll them out to a quarter of an inch. I prefer a thicker cookie. It does say you can go up to five-eighths of an inch. I have no idea what that is in metric. I'm so sorry. The recipe just says to roll it there. I, I tend to roll it a little thicker. So as soon as I get one cut out, I will show you how thick I am. There's the oven, 350 in case you're wondering. Okay. But they're probably going to be around the same thickness as the shortbread cookies I made yesterday. Yeah, they're maybe slightly thinner. So, same thing. I like the metal cut the metal cutters because they don't seem to make as thick of a cut and mash the dough. Uh, you don't need to flour it the first time or two, but after that it will start sticking pretty badly. So, uh, so yeah, that's slightly thinner than the cookies I was making with the shortbread. So, I am going to get this little tray in the freezer. It's really it's really small, but I just want to do a test bake on two of these to see how bad they're spreading, but it's going to sit in the freezer for as long as it takes me to cut out an entire, um, I guess it's a half sheet. So, once I have a half sheet cut out, I take this out of the freezer, put it in the oven for eight to 10 minutes, and I don't let mine brown around the edges, but you know, eight to 10 minutes. And then when it comes out, I do the switch around. So the next tray will go in, and then I fill another tray. And I do have, it's probably, it's, it's optional, I've never done this before, but I had a tray in the freezer that was already cold, that had cookies on it chilling from yesterday. So I took that and flipped it upside down, and I'm going to just put my, my cookies on top of it. And it'll, it'll kind of help chill things a little bit faster, I think, because you're going to have that, you know, cold tray that it's going to transfer the chill to a lot faster. So those ones are a little bit thicker. That's more the thickness I prefer. And then finally, I will, after these are all done and set and finished cooking and all that, I'll show you how I decorate them. Might as well get the whole start to finish. Now I will re-roll and re-roll and re-roll. Um, you know, again, like I said, I'm not a professional. I'm not doing this as a business. I know that some people don't like to re-roll their dough more than once. I don't like to waste dough, so it's just going to get re-rolled. Yes, more flour gets worked in there. And I am leaving some space between them. We'll see We'll see how much it spreads, but uh, I do leave a little bit of space just because they do puff a little. 
And now the dough is definitely a lot softer, so this will need to spend time in the freezer to make sure it doesn't spread. All right, I think that will fill up this cookie sheet, and I am going to do a little switch around and get the cookies in the oven, and, well, I'll let you know how they spread or not spread. All my cookies are made, so I am going to get on to making a royal frosting. I have six eggs. I need six egg whites. I am going to separate them and not get any yolk if I can avoid it. Yolk is bad. So I'm going to separate them into a bowl. That way if I accidentally get any yolk, I can just discard. So I'm only going to need yolks for this recipe. I will, or whites. I'm only going to need whites for this recipe. So I will use the yolks for something else. Chances are I'll probably end up freeze drying it because I don't really have a good use for just yolks. Whoops, I know there are lots of things I can do with them. I just, as of right now, I have so many eggs. I just need to, just need to get, get some gone. They claim your chickens will stop laying at some point, but I have not had that happen yet. So obviously we have not gotten to the super low temperatures yet. Now you could do this with um, meringue powder. I have in the past, but I found that the meringue powder is really expensive and it's like, for my area, it's a specialty ingredient and so it's like I couldn't just hop on over to Walmart and I don't think I found it at like Fred Meyer or any of my other local grocery stores. So yeah, it was uh, kind of annoying to find. So that was the first and last time I did that. There is a way to do it without. I did it with like a corn syrup one year but like, I had to make my own corn syrup because I don't keep corn syrup in the house either. So it's... I'm just using eggs this time. Now this is a pretty easy three ingredient royal frosting. So... Just helps to have some sort of mixer. I don't know that you could actually do this by hand. I don't know if I should keep these white little attachment points in or not, so I've been trying to take those out. Quick cleanup, and on to the next step. Okay, so I'm going to beat this until it's frothy, and in the meantime, I'm going to do this off screen, but I am going to sift my powdered sugar, icing sugar, confectioner sugar, whatever you want to call it, so that it is lump free, and then I can slowly start adding it. I'm probably just going to either mute this or do like a bit of a voiceover section for this part, but I don't want you listening to this because it's annoying. My eggs are getting frothy. I'm going to let this go just a little bit longer, but in the meantime I have this all sifted. I'm going to be just adding it a little bit at a time. It's three ingredients, and I will link the recipe below. I got this particular one from Preppy Kitchen, but I mean there's a ton of royal frosting recipes out there. Uh, I'm making a double batch, so it's three egg whites, one pound of sugar, and a teaspoon of extract. It called for vanilla extract, but I'm going to put in a little bit of almond extract, because that's just the flavor profile I like. Use what you like. So I'm going to get this going, and I'm going to slowly start adding in the icing sugar while I go get my my extract to put that in as well. Uh, looks pretty good. So if I need to, I could add a little bit of water to change the consistency if I wanted something more flood. Um, I'm going to leave it this way for now because I want to get some coloring in here. This is a double batch, so I'm going to keep about half of it for white, and then I'm going to make probably red, green, and... Probably brown, maybe. We'll see. I don't make too many colors because it's just more colors to have to deal with and, you know, it just makes decision making a little easier if you only have a few colors. So I'm going to get this uh, divided up into bowls and I'm going to add some color. I have some bags that come in a big roll. You can obviously use whatever you have. Uh, since I'm working with five different colors here, I decided I would uh, do blue as well. Uh, I'll just need, you know, I just use a bunch of these. I've only got one, one or two piping bags, I think. And they're old, they're in rough shape, they're 
not fun to clean. So glass, put your piping bag in it, and then fill her up. Now I'm going to just put the white directly in the bag. That way I don't have to worry about it crusting. And then I'm going to get the colors put in the other ones, and I'll, I'll show you that. I just use gel color because I have it. But I have used liquid color in the past. That's another reason to not add too much liquid at the beginning. Because if you're using liquid color, it will affect the consistency. You know, you'll change your... Uh, it'll change more to flood. So right now I can kind of use this for both flood and outlining. But, you know, if it's too wet or too runny, it will not be good for outlining after that. Now, I have not cut a hole in the bottom of this bag. I will cut it when I need it. So I will just sort of roll this closed and hope I don't overfill the top of my cup too badly. So there's a little bit left in here. I'm just going to scrape it out and put it in one of the bowls because it will be easier than trying to get it in this. So. If you have a bench scraper, something that's not too, too rough on the bag, you can uh, squeegee it down using that and get more of it down. I will probably do that after, but here we go. I'm going to get the colors in. I will, I'm going to mix up these colors. I got a brown, a red, a blue, and a green. I think that will cover all of the colors I need. Generally, what I do, and you know, obviously your mileage may vary, is I will take a toothpick. I will scoop out a little bit of the color and put it in, but for the first color, I will just use what I'm stirring with. That way I can grab more. And generally, I hope that that works, but if it doesn't, I just use the toothpicks. That way I'm not contaminating my color. A little does go a long way. Now for this batch, I only put in half of the amount of extract, and it's a little on the light side, so I might, might need to add a little bit more, but we'll see. Yeah, so I'll show you how that works. So you take a toothpick, you just want to sort of scoop, depending on how much you think you need, scoop a gob, and then I just swirl it through the frosting, clean it on the knife, and then I chuck it. So it's a bit of waste, but at least my color stays true. Okay, right, well I might just go with that. All right, and then pretty much I'm just going to repeat this with the rest of the colors, and then I'm going to put in, put them in the bags, and get them, get them, get them ready for piping. Here is how both of the cookies look. This is obviously the shortbread cookie. This is the sugar cookie. The sugar cookie does spread a little. You can see these are both the. It's the same cookie cutter. It's just a slight bit of spreading. I wanted to show you what the insides look like, so. This is, it's nice and flaky, but it does have a slight snap to it, and it does have a soft powdery texture to it when you eat it. This one is softer, a little airier, and it's got more of a um, slightly sugar cookie texture to it. They're both really good cookies. I highly recommend these. Let me know if you try them below. Here are my poor amputated uh, gingerbread men. I'm going to show you, I'm going to just take a little bit off and I'm going to test to see how how thin that ends up being. So I'm going to I'm going to try decorating a shortbread cookie. I never decorate them. I've never had them decorated, you know, when I was a kid. We just, you know, we would use the sugar or the chocolate chips. I'm not very good at this. I should be holding this a little bit further off and guiding it more. And I think I also made my hole a little too big. Also can't see my hands in the way. This is so much fun. There we go. And then I just go and try to wiggle it in with the tip. Some people use like a toothpick, but I'll just go through and fill this in. So I tend to just go through and fill in all my cookies in white. It just kind of makes it a little easier. I just spread it around with the tip. If you have piping tips, you're welcome to use them. I find that they're kind of a pain in the butt and then you need to have more bags. I try to just make sure I'm just using one bag and make it work. I can be cheap that way. Cheap, cheap, cheap. Okay, so yeah, I just uh, wiggle it in with the tip of the bag. Make sure there's no little holes anywhere. Sometimes they happen. 
make sure it's not spread too thin and there we go now I don't know if you've seen this little trick but if you turn the gingerbread man upside down you've got the nose of the reindeer with the ears and the antlers so I will decorate a bunch of them upside down as well and turn them into reindeer that's why I needed the brown so the brown is for the trunk of the tree and it's also for the sort of ears and antlers of the reindeer I think that's the only thing I use brown for honestly and the first cookie or the first couple of cookies always go a little poorly until I kinda get the hang of it again because I only do this about once a year but it is kinda fun to do kids seem to enjoy it what I'll do is for the kids they're not quite ready to fill in a cookie they'll fill it in like this and then just leave a bunch of spaces and it kinda looks a little bad I feel bad for them so I will go through and I will fill in cookies for them and then they just come through with the um, colored frosting and then they can decorate the details to their heart's content and I feel like that's a good a good compromise for the cookies, I will put them on a baking sheet in a single layer and I will just decorate them on the baking sheet and I can just move the sheets around. I can stack the sheets opposite each other so that the cookies get lots of air and I will let them sort of sit out and harden. I give them plenty of time to harden. That way when I pack the cookies, I know that they are good to go. So this is what I mean. I just put them on a baking sheet and they just stack up so they have plenty of time to harden without me having to worry about taking up a ton of space. So. I'll let these dry. If I wanted to, I could put another layer on top right away, and that would be a wet-on-wet -wet technique, and the frosting will just kind of melt in. Sometimes it'll bleed a little. Or I can let this dry completely and then put the details on top, and it'll just sit up raised from it. So it just depends on what I'm looking for. So these are my partially decorated cookies. I had a little fun with them, but as you can see, I'm not the greatest cookie decorator. But you know what? It's the thought that counts. And on to the plant update for the week. This is the celery, and oh my gosh, it is looking so good. I have been increasing the feed slowly over time, so I think I'm at 30 ml. I might have given up 40 last time, and maybe I'm just not remembering correctly. I really should just write these things down, but look how gorgeous these are. I did get rid of some of the lettuce, so I'm just left with these ones up here. This one doesn't look very good, and I've only been giving it 5 ml just to see... So this one's been basically staying on the amount I was giving it previously. It's kind of forming a head, but it's got this powdery stuff all over it, and I don't know what's going on. I don't know if you can see. There's like powder. This one's been getting 10 ml, and it, I don't know, it looks just as bad on the outside, but it's forming tighter heads, and I don't know, maybe it's because it's closer to the fan, or what's going on, I'm not sure. The cilantro is looking really good, so I'm pleased with that. Down here I have the spinach. It's just still trucking along. It's still doing fine. I will probably pull some of these bad leaves just to give to the chickens, but yeah. So I don't have any lettuce going on right now down here, but stay tuned. I do have some fun things going on, so I will be showing you that soon. And I wanted to show you that we have a strawberry plant going in a harvest. It's just the one, and I just put it in maybe two weeks ago. So this is the first time it got fed. And it's it's doing really good. I've seen some changes in the leaves. The leaves are this leaf is getting a little bigger, so it's doing it seems to be doing pretty good. So we'll just keep an eye on it and see how it's going. The cilantro here is doing pretty good. I do have a little bit of crunchiness going on and some leaf color changes. I wonder if the crunchiness is due to I couldn't remember when I fed it, so I gave it some of the just the Aero Garden nutrients and yeah, I don't know if that's what did it or if it was something else, but there's a couple of crunchy ones in there, but it's not too bad. The rest of it looks good, so yeah, I'm pleased with that. Finally, the peppers and tomatoes. The pepper plants are, you know, they don't look amazing. They're still going along. They're still pushing out new growth. There's flowers in there. I mean, it looks good, but it doesn't really look good. So I've been noticing that the leaves are a little more... I don't know, stressed than usual. I also have, I think I have aphids. And I don't know if it's in the pepper plant yet, but it's definitely over here in the tomato plant. The tomato plant looks pretty good. I think I've been feeding it enough and keeping up with its nutrient needs. So I got lots of tomatoes all over the place. I still have flowers coming in. It's pushing out like a ton of suckers, which is so annoying to keep up with. I, I'm still wondering if this is the plant I think it is. 
And this one's resting on top of the light. I probably need to move that. And then down here, this one, it is, it's got bugs on it too. I think this is the one where I noticed the bugs initially. I went through and I kind of pinched the, the bugs off and I've been spraying it, but I think I need to pull out the neem oil and mix that up. Otherwise, the, the seedling, so this is just an off cutting from a, a sprout, what do you call it, a sucker. So it's put out a nice amount of roots. I moved it into the middle spot so that it can just be, it can be the middle plant. The other one looked awful. I mean, it was just totally decimated. I, I lifted it up and it, it just came out of the container. There was no roots and it was all just rotted. So that one, I don't know what happened to that. This is the second seedling where I've had a problem. So yeah, I don't know what's going on. This, this sucker is from this big behemoth here and it's doing really well. So. I am going to try to keep ahead of the bugs and and hopefully it'll it'll take off, but we'll see. In the meantime, I hope you enjoyed this video. Thank you so much for joining me today. I'll have some videos up at the end that you might enjoy. Let me know if you try the cookies and how you thought about them, and I will see you next time on the Arrow Garden Homestead.